Now, the law provides careful functions of the Office of the NCIS. Those functions include producing a national threat assessment and a national strategy based on that threat assessment. To then coordinate counterintelligence resource allocations across the government to ensure conformity with these national priorities and to prioritize CI operations and collections requirements. This challenge is very much like, generically, the challenges that Jim and John have been describing this morning for the whole of the U.S. national security system. How do we integrate across disparate activities? How do we bring strategic direction to these activities? How do we pull things together? And, and so the position of NCIX, and what my experiences when I was in that office tracked very nicely with precisely the kinds of questions that the Project on National Security Reform is trying to study and learn from. With the responsibilities that the NCIX is given, let me list some of the authorities that the office does not have under existing law and directive. Redirecting resource allocations. No. Approving programs or budgets. No. Establishing new strategic counterintelligence program elements. No. Set collection requirements. No. Oversee or engage in operations. No. Direct departments or agencies to provide support to the office. Not even that. There was a rather important mismatch, as I saw it, between what we were trying to accomplish in creating the NCIX and the powers and authorities that were given to the office. It's a little bit, and, and, and for someone coming in with a responsibility that is so serious and so ambitious, but so limited in authority, it's an interesting psychology. It's sort of like, how many here, anyone here watch the show Survivor? I'm not a, uh, uh, as someone who's usually uh, watching Survivor, but I'm interested in the psychology of that because as I understand the concept, you're thrown on an island, you've got to, you've got to make do with what you've got. And the interesting thing about making do with what you've got is that it really does focus the mind and bring, hone in on exactly what is most important to get the job done. And so a lot of my experience, and not of my staff, really was looking at what is truly essential to get the job done. And I will tell you now, and I will explain later, that the lack of these authorities, wall of great concern, proved to be not the most difficult problem that we faced. The first thing that we had to do was to develop a national counterintelligence strategy. This was the linchpin from which all the other programs would be, against which all the other programs would be arrayed. So the new strategy was our principal objective. Based on a comprehensive threat assessment, which is to say all that the U.S. government already knew about foreign intelligence activities, how do you wrap the stack them? What are the most concerned? How are they of most concern? based on national security considerations. Tying those things together, what is the strategic approach to dealing with foreign intelligence threats? First national counterintelligence strategy was approved by President Bush in 2005. It was the first ever for the nation. It was the first formal mission statement for what I will call strategic counterintelligence as an instrument of national security strategy. And because it was the first mission statement, it was important that it get as wide a distribution as possible, and so we made it unclassified. Unclassified. 
Now, the implementation plans, of course, were highly classified, but the strategy itself is available for the public to see. It was a sharp departure from past practices, especially given its core focus on proactive strategic operations. We called on each of the operating elements, the FBI, the CIA, and the military services to assume important new duties. And it, may, it, it called for building a counterintelligence system, a national security counterintelligence system, and the new tools of that system <coughs> to execute strategic counterintelligence operations. Together, the strategy put forth the need for major but achievable changes in the way we do business. That was the strategy. It was approved by the president and then that happened. Well, the first thing that we needed to do was to develop the implementation plans and so our agency groups are pulled together. What does this mean? How do you how are you going to reduce these large strategic goals to practical programmatic elements? While that work was going on, the departments and agencies are building their budgets. And they're asked to come in and the way they're doing against the priorities established in the new strategy, and so they did. First time ever, a cross-review of all of the counterintelligence budgets of the United States arrayed against these strategic priorities. And you know what? They matched up perfectly. All of the pillars of the counterintelligence strategy found matching elements in each of the departments and agencies because the program managers and the budget managers from these departments and agencies were forward meaning in describing what they're already doing as consistent with the national counterintelligence strategy. While these major reviews are going on, time marches on, and the budget cycle of the federal government marches on. So that by the time all of the, implement the implementation work is ongoing, budget reviews are underway, we see that the programs all match up to the national strategy. By the time that happens, a new budget is already issued. We're into the next budget cycle, and you know what the law says. You have to put out a new counterintelligence strategy. So what happens? Lessons learned by the departments and agencies in going through this rigorous review was that they can outweigh national strategic violence. This is not this is this is not something that where I would fault them. I am simply describing to you how the process of government works and why people say it is so difficult and so slow to be able to turn the ship of government with so many elements to its own moving parts. With that experience, the central focus and new feature of the national counterintelligence strategy remained unfulfilled. And what is that central? 